I was just thinking about um, body, soul, and spirit and the relationship between spirit and soul. And I believe that the only way to really understand that is to understand male and female. When uh, David referred to his soul, he referred to his soul as female. He said, my soul doth make her boast in thee. So that establishes that the soul is female, that the spirit is male. And as we heard, the spirit is perfect. Our spirit has been regenerated recreated and is perfect our spirit is life because he is life that's why jesus said you are the light of the world but we have the soul we have the soul that is that is also part of us let's go to that first scripture if we could jesus talked about male and female and he said and he was quoting genesis he said wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. Therefore, God hath joined together. Let what God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. And so while we say that we have a spirit, soul, and body, the spirit and the soul are one flesh, a male and female part of the same being. But I love what Ernest said about the fact when we allow God to administer our life, then the soul becomes enlightened to who she really is. Amen? Because of who her husband is. Let's go to that next scripture. Awake to righteousness. That's what the soul does. You see, the soul has been sanctified. She is righteous. That part of us, our soul is righteous, but... She has to awake to the fact that she is righteous. See, the woman comes under the covering of the man. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband. So soul, submit yourself to your husband. I love that. Administration. The soul submits to the spirit in every condition. And the spirit says, love more. And the soul says, okay, Lord, I really don't want to do that right now but I love you enough to submit to that. And the soul becomes sanctified by the believing husband. Let's go to the third scripture because we see an example of that. And now the Apostle Paul is kind of putting this both ways, but he says the unbelieving husband sanctified the wife. That doesn't really apply much to what we're talking about, but it says the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. And so the soul sometimes does not believe the position of righteousness that she has been established in. And so that's where there's a convincing, there's an awakening to her position. And so it is very interesting that we have this spirit and soul, male and female, within us. And the spirit is perfect. And the soul comes under, she is sanctified and she comes under the covering of her husband, but there's an awakening, amen? And I think that's what we're hearing. I think that's what the Spirit of God is saying. Awake to who you really are. Awake to who you are in the Spirit. Allow Him to, to administer your life. Submit to that part of you that always does the will of the Father. Always. Our spirit is always doing the will of the of the Father. I think it was David that said, I delight to do thy will. There is a part of you that delights to do his will. It needs no convincing. The only part that needs convincing is our soul. And that's why we say, Lord, we wake up every morning, we say, Lord, I just want to come under your covering. I just submit to you. It's not about doing, it's about being. Lord, I just submit my soul unto you. And like David said, bless the Lord, O my soul. He was, he was saying, speaking from his spirit to his soul, saying, you may not feel like it, but it's time to bless the Lord. Allow him to administer your life because he does a lot better job than we do. Amen.